You know what, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Instead of just kind of giving you highlights and saying some points, I wanna read uh, an article I wrote. I think it's one of the most important articles of the year and definitely going to catch a lot of heat for it. The title is Post Pandemic Pastors and the Sin of Silence. And let me state up front, I might read and then talk to you, but let me state up front that there are countless men I respect from uh, Jim Garlow, Jack Hibbs, Jack Graham, uh, James Robinson, Dr. Michael Brown, a lot of these guys I look to for advice, and there's a lot of good churches doing great things, uh, but there is a disturbing trend taking place. Now, here we go. As I said before, over the last few decades, Americans have witnessed the destruction of the institution of marriage between a man and a woman, the removal of God's word, horrific racism, and blatant murder of children. And this is an indictment, an indictment against America. And the pulpit is partially responsible, hence the need for this article. Our silence is speaking volumes. The, pul the pulpit, the, the pastor, regulates the spiritual condition of God's people, which affects the nation. A lukewarm, sex-saturated culture simply reflects the lack of conviction in the pulpit as well as the pew. And as Jim Garlow rightly noted, uh, when I spoke to him this week, there are approximately 364,000, check this out, 364,000 churches in America, 72% or 264,000 are considered liberal. They don't even hold uh, to, to the, the, the inerrancy of scripture, if you can believe that. And uh, according to Barna, somewhere between 6,000 and 15,000 actually hold to a bona fide biblical worldview as God's word as our authoritative resource for truth. Now that leaves 72% of churches in America don't even look to the Bible as authoritative. Oh, they'll quote it now and then, and it's a good book, but they do not allow it to shape and transform their lives and the lives of their congregation. Uh, so no wonder America is crumbling from within. The very foundation is deteriorating. And then he went on to say, bold pastors are nearly extinct. It would be much easier to play church and make everyone feel good. The church as we know it today will be functionally illegal soon. With the recent Scotus, which is the Supreme Court of the United States, decision, the First Amendment died and churches will very soon be forced to hire those who practice homosexuality, homosexuality and transgenderism, and we will not be allowed to speak against that sinful practice. Now, let me say, I'm not saying that in anger or arrogance. On this side of the cross, without Jesus Christ, we're all sinners. My sin is no different than your sin, but we can no longer call uh, we can no longer call good what God calls wrong. We can no longer call good what God calls evil. We can no longer capitulate and cave into the opinions of men. Now I'm going off script here, by the way. We, we, we got to call it out and say, hey, we love you enough to tell you the truth that this type of lifestyle is a sin according to God. It's not even how he designed us. You know, uh, you know I don't want to get details here. But anyway, so this article, this article is because I love people. I love pastors. I love those who struggle with sin. Uh, this article is not a rebuke per se, but a tear-stained plea to return to God. The blood of the unborn children and the effects of ungodly legislation are just are not just on the hands of judges. They are on the hands of capitulating preachers. Society can ignore the millions of murdered children, mock the police, desecrate society, pillage and destroy, redefine marriage, support perversion, uh, back ungodly movements, and pastors are supposed to keep their mouth shut. Hmm, I don't think so. I don't think so, not on our watch. And then I go on to say the irony of silent watchmen. The Bible calls pastors watchmen who cry out. They sound the alarm to awaken the sleeping church, not to sing her lullabies. The prophet Isaiah, who doesn't mince words, said this about lazy watchmen. Now, I can, I can fall in this category too, guys. You need to be filled mightily with the Spirit of God through prayer and humility and brokenness. And through that boldness, that's where you preach the truth that changed the culture. Uh, we can't just whip it up. It has to be brought down from heaven. So backing away from speaking, oh, I should go back to what Isaiah said. He said, lazy watchmen are blind and ignorant. They're all dumb dogs who cannot bark. In other words, they cannot raise their voice and warn. They sleep and lie down, loving to slumber. At first glance, you might think this is too strong, but I can reassure you that it is not. Backing away from speaking the truth is a serious offense to God. Here's why. This is the key. 
A pastor does not call himself, a real pastor, a genuine pastor. Actually, I like what D. Martin Lloyd-Jones said in his book, Preachers and Preaching, that you don't call yourself, you become conscious, you become aware of a calling. So here's the key. If a genuine pastor is called to the ministry by God, what are they called to do? They're called to speak the truth even on tough topics. Silence about sin is rebelling against the call of God. Think about that. So when I'm silent on these issues and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coward, and I don't want to touch, step on toes. I, I just want to love people. Then that is going against your God-given calling. Yes, encourage the prodigal. Show them the love of Christ. But do not tippy-toe around sin. Confront it when it needs to be confronted. You have to find that balance of Jesus, grace and mercy, full of truth, but also full of mercy and grace. And there are a few spirit-filled preachers left, and when one arises, they are quickly labeled right-wing, extreme, or narrow-minded. And the so-called evangelical church is on the verge of totally capit capit capitulating. Anyone have a trouble on that one? Especially on the cusp, of, again, of the Supreme Court's decision. Uh, here's what's important. I am equally alarmed at the number of leaders who remain silent when police officers are killed and black babies are aborted. These woke Christians are not woke to the things of God, that's for sure. They often do more harm than good by hashtagging and promoting false narratives and not showing the whole side of the picture. Yes, we need to unite against racism and call it out when warranted, but our, our, our capitulation has led to cowardliness and trying to correct the sin of racism, the pendulum has now swung in a dangerous dangerous direction, rioting, hurting people. Look at the, the, the elderly, how they're being treated. The, what's happening in, in Seattle, it, it, it's a mockery to, to, to our governing authorities. And how do you, so it's swung so far in that direction, direction. To fix racism, you have to preach about sin, repentance, the judgment to come, and forgiveness. Pastors, if you ignore those foundational truths, you will never change a heart. And that's the danger of the social gospel. The social gospel is we need to go out and do all these things, but the heart doesn't change. It's not about what Christ did on the cross. It's about what we can do. Now, I'm, a, I'm all for changing society. That's what the gospel does. But you better make sure you understand the true gospel and not these false narratives that are out there. So from Orange County, California, I don't want to have to name pastors, but I'm gonna, I'm, we're getting to that point where we're getting ready to do that at, at, this, at, at this stage in the game. From Orange County, California to Dallas, te Texas, how sad that many churches won't even do voter registrations. They'll do all kinds of things, but they will not allow people to register, to put people in positions of biblical authority. Now here's why this is so important. God ordained the government. Surely he doesn't want us to stay silent. What we say or what we do not say greatly impacts politics. We are not being political. We are being biblical. Saying I'm just not political is really an excuse to hide behind cowardliness. Bold pastors, like Jim Garlow said, bold pastors may look like they're on the wrong side of history, but they're actually on the right side of eternity. Many are even marching with ungodly groups and seeking redemption by kneeling. This is again why the social gospel, if not properly explained, is dangerous. It removes redemption through Christ. That's our only hope. Our only hope is redemption through Christ. Yet, let's not talk about that. Let's get them out of the courts. Let's get them out of the schools. Let's get them out of everything. Let's just, let's just fix society. How does that work? It doesn't. And how is that working? It's not. We have to get back to the, the biblical mandate of preaching the gospel. Go out and preach the gospel. Uh, there is no harm in calling for national repentance. We do that often. Uh, but why not unite white and black pastors in peaceful, biblically grounded, gospel-centered, God-honoring gatherings rather than align with groups who fuel anger, revel in sin, and take pride in their lack of forgiveness? And now I go on to say the, the sin of prayerlessness and then when pulpits were aflamed with righteousness, but I want to keep this under 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is put the link of this article when it comes out we're trying to get on the website today as soon as it comes out we're going to put it in the comment section i'm not the comment section sorry the description and we want you to share 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 and then share again again this is a this is a tear stained plea if you could hear my heart it's not a heart of anger uh from arrogance or anything it, it is but it is uh, welling up inside of me righteous indignation because the things of god are being trampled upon and those who should be sounding the alarm are remaining silent. So I hope to talk to you soon about this. Thank you.